excited you first to come interested in art? Um, believe it or not, I was actually back when I go to Deep and um, the teacher there called Mrs Page and she um, inspired me when I joined Deep and I was sort of uh, interested in art anyway and I, I became much more, more intrigued by it and um, I think it was the beginning of my GCSE uh, she said to me to me about going to Kingston University and then going on actually to do some teaching in art as well part time um, and that's always stuck with me so it carried on from there and I sort of went off and did um, foundation at Suffolk College and then University of Staffordshire um, to do ceramics for the computer. And on your website you mentioned that you had this lifelong ambition to have a, a creative space at the end of your garden and when did you realise this dream? Um, I was very lucky, I lived in Norfolk for four years and we had a small sort of Flintstone cottage and there was a small very cold outbuilding with a kiln in um, probably half the size of the room we're in at the moment and uh, um, and that really enabled me to get started yeah, but, um, since moving to Feedstone and then a few la years later buying a studio which is just back from my own house um, I've been able to expand and actually think about putting together a real sort of body of work hopefully to then get into some exhibitions and develop from there. What services does Felix Studios provide? Um, it's a private studio space so um, I, I since having opened it I'd always intended to share it with other artists because Primarily, it's, it's a space for me to have my work. Um, but to have other artists, when you first came in today, you saw a few other artists were here and they've gone off for coffee and they're coming back again. Um, it's a space always to network where there's, there's five other artists and we often bump into each other and talk about issues, our work, or other things that are going on. Um, and also, um, I've always wanted to continue the teaching element because I'm, I work part time as a teacher as well. And I provide workshops in the studio for adults in the evenings. Um, doing ceramics my specialism and also um, children's classes, all sorts of arts and crafts and I just do them occasionally in the holidays. Um, what impact did the realisation of the studios um, have on your work as an artist? Um, it suddenly gave me the space to go back to sort of almost being a student again. I've, um, I've been sort of uh, drawing again, having my books around me to do the experiment again. Um, and actually going back and having the time to come in here for an hour or two in the evening or um, to spend a, a Saturday afternoon in here because um, at the moment I've only been here part time but it's allowed me to go back to my roots and start developing my work properly um, through and become inspired again um, to go, go out and do some research along the beach and the shoreline that I'm interested in and then actually have the time and the space to create work and I'm actually trying to work bigger at the moment I've, some of my smaller sculptures I'm working into a larger scale so that's the new direction I'm going in so it's really mm -hmm. exciting to do that in. Your work's mainly um, with ceramics. Um, is there any other materials that you use in your work? Um, I have, when I was without a kiln um, for a few years, um, I really got into painting. I needed to express myself and without a kiln it's impossible to do that in clay. Um, and now I use a combination of sort of painted work as well as um, the, the, the clay. These pieces here behind you um, the, the acrylics as well, certain textural work. Um, so I use a mixture of, of painting and acrylics as well as the glazes. Um, I'm also looking to do more assembled work. I'm being inspired by Leslie, who's one of the artists in the studio as well. She uses a whole variety of found materials. Yeah. Okay, what is it about shorelines and pebbles that inspires your work? Um, believe it or not, I actually think it stems from when I was younger, I was actually slightly short sighted, I wear contact lenses now. Um, and I'm convinced that I'm interested in detail because I couldn't actually see distance. So I was always interested in leaves and shells and acorns and, and small things. And of course, when you're beachcombing, I've always lived by the sea, um, you know, that's what I was looking at. I was looking at the small and the detail. If I looked at a, a vista, a, a sea view, I didn't see that sort of detail because I was actually slightly short-sighted. Um, it was quite an inspiration having contact, uh, well, glasses when I was a, a young girl and, and realising actually there was views there. So, um, but the fascination with things like pebbles is the surfaces, um, the richness of how the actual stone is made up. I also love finding things that are man-made that have been eroded by the sea and the surface is actually worn to look like an actual object. And sometimes you have to sort of study them and, and try and work out where their origin is from and whether they are actually have a natural um, linkage or so. A mixture of reasons, I think, really, just a fascination. <laughs> when did you first become involved with Stephen High School? Um, was it just over a year ago, three years ago, I think it was, when um, um, I had a phone call um, 
inquiry if I'd like to become more involved, I knew we were going to your art status um, and where I'd like to start to, to join together to perhaps make some connections from a, a local artist point of view with the school. Um, my first ever active um, role was uh, writing a workshop for the Rainbow, which is a great fun. Many of them um, up in the art room uh, working on a clay piece that we developed through a mixture of pressing things into the clay and the surfaces. Um, and they went away all, all smiling, happy and inspired, I think. I know the children had a go at some textiles work that evening as well while they were with us. Um, and I'm also hoping to do a couple more workshops um, with local schools that bring your community in. Um, and, uh, and I know into next week, isn't it, we're, we're coming into school again to do the one for the brownies and then the garlic. Yeah, so that it relates, but actually... Um, I just wondered what you've actually got in store for the guys and the brownies over the next couple of weeks. Again, I'm going to focus in what I'm like and what I'm interested in, which is small things, you know, um, inspirational things, surfaces and textures. Um, with the brownies, I know they were, had an interest in looking at things that are floral or flowers. Um, so we're going to be inspired by the structure of plants and leaves and flower heads and how they're built up and the petals um, fold or unfold or curl. And they're going to produce some small bowls which are inspired by the direction and the shapes of leaves and also the surface texture of the centre of the flowers. Um, and the guide, I'm going to actually stick more closer to home and I'm going to give them a selection of things from the beach um, that they are to look at the form uh, of them and the construction of them, how they're made. Some of them will be natural, some of them will be man made. Um, and then they're going to create a small coil pot inspired by that shape. I'm going to look at ways of uh, texturing the surface. Fantastic. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it should be. I'm looking forward to it.